Hi everyone, my name is Marissa and welcome back. Today I'm bringing to you March favorites. Favorites videos are literally like top five of my favorite things to watch on YouTube ever. And I have a lot of favorite things that I like to watch on YouTube. As I recently started filming again, I thought that I would bring a different type of favorites. Not just beauty favorites, but also sort of technology, style, um, decor, lifestyle all the type of favorites, anything that I've been enjoying this month, and I hope that you guys enjoy this format a little bit more. Of course, I'm very interested in appearance and beauty as well, and that's what I'm going to be bringing to you first as a category. I have been obsessed with this blush, and I already talked about it too much, I don't want to really kind of run it into the ground here, but Milani's Baked Blush in Luminoso, it is my most favorite blush of all time. It's just so pretty. Ironically, I'm not wearing it today, but I wear it most days. It just goes with everything, and I, I absolutely love it. It's like a peachy shimmer. It's so pretty. <laughs> I mentioned this in my most recent haul video. This is the Rimmel Wake Me Up Anti-Fatigue Effect and Radiant Glow Concealer. This is fast becoming one of my most favorite concealers from the drugstore. I actually like it better than that Maybelline sort of eye eraser anti-age you know, that thing that you s screw up, that everybody is dying for. It has the same texture, it's very thin, but what I find with this one, I don't know if it has some caffeine in it, and that's what the wake me up is. Caffeine is actually amazing for your skin, for really invigorating the cells, and sort of making everything look awake, and sort of tightening and lifting everything. Um, that sounded really scary, but I promise it makes everything look good. I love wearing this under my eyes, and I find that that effect really does kind of help with the puffiness, and it just kind of tightens the skin just the right amount that you can't really see the bags under my eyes. This is something that I've been struggling with for so long, and I'm actually kind of like a concealer hoarder. Sorry, not sorry. It's like one of the biggest things that I'm trying to conceal on my face at all times. I just don't like the under eye bags under my eyes. But this is amazing. It gives pretty much a full coverage. I wouldn't say it's the fullest of full coverages, but the thin texture is just something that I'm coming to love for concealers at the moment. As everyone knows, my most favorite concealer of all time is the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Full Cover Concealer. I actually have said it so many times that I know how to say the whole thing, but this is just so good and it's a great alternative. It's a little bit drier than the Marc Jacobs one, but I actually kind of like that for under the eyes. It doesn't crease, which is amazing as well. This is the Real Techniques Contour Brush, and not only does it work for obviously contouring the face, so adding shadows to where you want to make your face look a lot more angular, it also is really great for a precision sort of blush, and I just think it's amazing. I, I use it almost every single time I apply my makeup. Speaking of contouring, this is the Kevin O'Quan Sculpting Powder in Medium, and I don't know why they call it Medium, because um, I think it's the only one that they make. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the most perfect sculpting shade um, that I've come across. I have been using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Kit, and it's fine. I don't think that their contour shades are great. They're a little bit too brown and muddy, a little bit dirty, but this is just the perfect amount of a sort of taupey gray mixed with that brown that gives you a great contour. I think the perfect contour is one that... Um, Jordan Liberty said it best. He's a, um, a actually professional makeup artist on YouTube. He said that the best type of contour, the most natural contour, is one that you can't really see and it just kind of already enhances what's already there. And as you can see today, you can't really see, but it's just the tiniest amount of this shadow right here that I use to enhance my contour and enhance the sort of hollow of the cheekbone. There's really no like brown streak that's so popular right now. I think the brown streak is beautiful, but it's just not as natural and it doesn't look as good as when it's photographed and put on, say, Instagram. This one picks up so quickly. It's just like the tiniest little dab on the brush creates lots of fallout, so make sure you're super gentle, but I just love it. It's so good and I always go back to it when I find that the other contour shades that I've been trying out have been letting me down. The next thing I've been loving is this. It's the Lorac Pro Palette, and it's in front of my eyes because it's literally all I see when it comes to eyeshadows. I love this palette. I don't, I don't see it getting any better than this for eyeshadow palettes. Um, today I'm wearing it actually on my eyes, and I copied the sort of look for the Charlotte Tilbury Vintage Vamp look. For the eye look that I'm wearing today, I actually used Garnet, which is this beautiful rusty brown that I think is the most comparable to the Vintage Vamp colors in the Charlotte Tilbury palette. The color pewter here which is beautiful mixed with sable 
in the crease, and then gold, which I put all over the eyelid. I think that it's so, so amazing that you can really copy this high-end luxury palette from Charlotte Tilbury look with this one palette. I think that the quality of the shadows are amazing. They are really soft and they pick up really easily, which I think is great because you don't really need too much shadow and this is going to last you a really long time. I also just think that like the packaging, it's slim, it's just, it's literally everything and as I said, it's the apple of my eyes. For my style favorite, this one's kind of like a freebie, this is my hair. I absolutely have been loving my hair since I cut it off. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, go ahead and follow me because I posted a selfie a long time before I announced this hair. It's called a lob, but basically it's a long bob, but I think it's interesting because it's also like you lobbed off your hair. I don't know. It's basically a really blunt cut with more textured layers at the back and I absolutely love this haircut. It's so quick to dry, so quick to style, um, it's just so low maintenance and I cut off all of the dry dead ends that have been sticking around for, I don't know, years on my head and it's just, ugh, I just love it when the ends are just, you know, like just so healthy and perfect. I'm not one of those people that you know, hates getting their hair cut and only gets half an inch or a quarter of an inch cut off just to keep it neat. I always kind of go for these dramatic haircuts, but this one is amazing and I just love it. I fi find that I'm just really inspired by this hair to just sort of amp up my clothing, amp up my looks, amp up my jewelry, and I'm just, oh man, I just love this hair. It's so good. The next favorite is a film favorite, and my boyfriend is so annoyed by this, but Big Hero 6 is literally my most favorite movie. Probably it's going to be my most favorite movie for the foreseeable time being, because I just love it. There's this gigantic, huge, sort of like, Marshmallow Man character named Baymax, and he is so funny, and he's kind of awkward, but very gentle, and kind of vulnerable, and sort of naive in the way that he has to learn different things about how to behave. It's set in this futuristic city called San Francisco, which is obviously a mix of San Francisco and Tokyo. And it's just, I think, one of my most favorite Disney films that have come out ever since. I don't understand why it hasn't gotten as much hype as, like, Frozen, because it is so cute. My boyfriend is so, so, so over me quoting Baymax. <laughs> Hairy baby. Hairy baby. <laughs> also love the sort of like fist bump, the ba la la la. So my boyfriend, he posted this thing on my wall, which I'm sure now he seriously regrets. And it's all of the different translations of when Baymax says hairy baby. So there's there's hairy baby, hairy baby. And then there's also like um, <laughs> French, which is baby poilu. <laughs> baby poilu. Japanese is um, kebukai akacha. Kebukai is so cute. And then I think like a, like Spanish or Italian is bimbo peloso. Bimbo peloso. And then one of the other ones, I don't know exactly what language this is, but I think it's Finnish. It goes harva warva. <laughs> oh my god, if he ever watches this video, he's gonna be so annoyed with me for doing this. I do this pretty much every time I am on the phone with him. I quote Harry Baby in various different languages to him. He hates it. Next favorites are technology favorites. The first thing is this Mophie Juice Pack Power Station. I'm, it's actually branched to my phone right now, but I think it's amazing. I actually have two of them because my dad didn't want one of his anymore, and I just think it's amazing. It charges your phone, it's quick to charge, Basically, it just charges your phone. This one here charges two charges, and then a tiny one, which is called the Power Station Mini, which I also have, just charges it once, and it's literally a lifesaver. I carry it around like a like a lifeline in my purse at all times. It's like the Bourjois Healthy Balance Powder, the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Full Cover Concealer, the Pixie Correction Concentrate in Brightening Peach, and my Mophie. <laughs> the next thing is an app which is also accessible via your internet browser. It's called Duolingo, and it's a way to learn different languages very easily. It's made for English speakers, but you can also change it for various other native languages. And it's really interactive and fun. You have a speaking element as well as a translation element. And then it's just, it's really easy to learn vocabulary words for me, brushing up on my French as well as I've started to learn Italian. And I've just loved being able to be a little bit more productive with my spare time and using Duolingo. I love using the app before I go to bed. This is Seven Days in the Art World by Sarah Thornton. Sarah Thornton actually writes really easy and comprehensive introductions to art and various facets of the art world. 
obviously art is very difficult to understand. It's it kind of has that elitist thing where if you you enter into it, you it's very difficult to kind of learn things about it and you have to be more of an insider and it can feel very alienating and sort of ostracizing to just kind of jump into it. This book gives you seven days, so seven different parts of the art world, such as the crit, the auction, the fair, the biennale, the studio visit, and it shows you a very easy to understand introduction to various parts of the art world. It's been invaluable to me, really, um, as I've been trying to decide after graduating with a degree in art history from McGill to kind of realize what I want to do. It really pained me that I wasn't available to be filming to do my 2014 beauty favorites because those are literally my most favorite videos to watch on YouTube. I often find myself going through my favorite YouTubers sort of favorites videos for like very far distant previous years. Like I found myself in a 2011 favorites once which is... I need to do more Duolingo and do productive things with my free time. I hope you guys enjoyed this favorites video. If you do, you have three options to show me some love. The first one is to leave a comment on this video. The second one is to like this video by clicking the thumbs up button down below. And the third is to hit subscribe and don't miss any more of my videos. There's a subscription button right there and then also one down below. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and always remember to just be yourself. Bye.